All right, uh, Leonard, I was talking to you before this and getting the show ready, and you had, to sum up all this, you had a quotation or a sentence where you're going to fit all this together to make sense. That is correct. Um, from my teaching days, I've been trained to sum up what you want to say in a single sentence. That way people can walk out the room remembering what you said. And that single sentence is this. From top to, to bottom, 9-11 is about money, control, and the occult. Wow. That's a, that's a very powerful uh, saying right there. So do tell us what's behind this whole thing. Okay, well, first of all, let's just start on the surface level, or at the top of the pyramid, if you will, about money. Uh, in order to understand why 9-11 occurred, we've got to wind the clock back a little bit. Back until the 1920s, actually. Back then, the British Empire was fading, and the British pound was losing its effectiveness as the world's reserve currency. We're talking about the interwar period between World Wars I and World War II. Now, in comes the United States at the end of World War II. And the powers that be back then decided that because the United States was the deciding factor in World War II, that the United States would be rewarded by making the United States dollar the world's reserve currency. Instead of punishing Germany one more time for starting World War II, like it was punished in World War I, which would have only sown the seeds for World War III. So instead of punishing the, the, the losing side, America was rewarded by financially by making the U.S. dollar the world's reserve currency. Now, you might say, well, who cares about that? Well, hang on here. The world's reserve currency uh, status going to the United States dollar means that every time you sell an ounce of gold, every time you sell a gallon of gas, a barrel of oil, that the United States dollar becomes the benchmark in, uh, through which those commodities and everything else are traded. Now, that brought an awful, awful high demand for the United States dollar. Now, the fact that the United States dollar was now king and that the United States wasn't really touched by World War II, with the exception of Pearl Harbor, made the United States on top from the uh, 1945 until, I would argue, until 1971. Uh, there's never been a nation in history which has had so much power and so much um, financial power, military power, etc. And in 1971, something started to happen. Richard Nixon took the United States dollar off of the gold standard. That was the first time in history when the United States dollar was backed by nothing. In other words, you're just working for pieces of paper which are printed out by a private Federal Reserve Bank. A private bank, okay? Yeah, that is the Federal Reserve of the United States, okay? Now, in the past, the United States dollar was backed by gold. In 1971, Richard Nixon canceled all that because uh, nations like France uh, wanted um, to trade in their dollars for gold. And Nixon was under pressure not to raise taxes, but to devalue the United States dollar to pay for Vietnam, which was... Uh, uh, a se severe bill at the time. So your first official economic and geopolitical downfall started back in 71. And you had about 30 years of just unbelievable prosperity. Now, uh, as soon as the United States dollar was officially devalued, um, other nations, and particularly the OPEC nations, uh, wanted more for their money. They weren't happy with what they were getting in exchange for their oil. So along comes 
someone named Henry Kissinger, who sa- says to the OPEC nations, tell you what, I'll cut you a deal. We will buy, as in the United States will buy, all your oil for its needs if you continue to agree to buy or sell all your oil to other nations in the, United, in the United States dollar. Now, at the time, the OPEC nations went for it, okay, because the United States dollar back then still uh, bought you something. And the United States, back in 1971, still had about 50% of all the economic power in the world. One nation, half of the economic output in the entire planet. Uh, which is a far cry from where it is today, which is 23%. So it's less than half of what it was in 1971. Now I'm building to a point here. Let's wind the clock up to 1991. And then Gulf War War I with Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein was driving down the price of oil by pumping too much oil out of the ground, flooding the world with cheap oil. Now that acted as a drag on the United States dollar because there's too much oil, the cost of oil goes down, the Saudis can't make as much money for their oil, and the demand for the United States dollar falls because uh, people are buying cheaper and cheaper oil. And that, my friends, is exactly why The United States invaded um, Baghdad and the rest of Iraq in 1991. Why? To preserve the value of the United States dollar. It is all about the money. And that is a decade before 9-11. Now let's wind the clock up 10 years to just before 9-11. Keep in mind this is now about a year or two just before 9-11. Saddam Hussein, badly beaten and bruised by 10 years of bombing and sanctions on his country, Uh, the military dictator that he was, I'm not saying he was a saint, I'm saying he was a large fish that was busy being eaten on by an even larger fish, mainly the United States, um, wanted to sell his oil in euros. This is not a good idea if you're the United States. Okay, so now the United States has a second reason to continue to clamp down on Iraq. Now enter another factor in all of this, which is the Taliban in Afghanistan. They wanted to cut a deal with the United States to establish a pipeline uh, from the Caspian Sea to uh, other distribution points. Now, where am I going with all this? Well, it's very simple. There was too much oil being pumped and that dragged down the value of the United States dollar, which was busy being devalued ever since Richard Nixon took the United States dollar off the gold standard. So 9-11 happened as a way, just on the surface, and we're just talking about the money aspect of 9-11 now, as a way to preserve the purchasing power of the United States dollar. And that right there is about 70 years of history. Wow. (laughs) So much stuff I didn't even know. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, who would would suspect uh, Saddam Hussein of uh, trying to play the United States dollar off the the rest of the world? I mean, nobody, because we're all too busy watching sports and soap operas and dancing with the stars. But in the meantime, in the meantime, there's some serious, you know, multi-trillion dollar stuff happening out there. And uh, the point of it is the Washington Post, uh, about four days ago now, came out with a headline article. The average American is now 40 percent poorer I said 40% poorer than they were four years ago. Why is that? Because the United States dollar is being devalued. And this leads back to 9-11. 
believe it or not. Okay, so uh, we talked about Kissinger making a deal with the Saudis in particular and OPEC to extend the purchasing power of the United States dollar. We talk about uh, how Afghanistan was quarantined and how its um, oil pipeline was prevented from uh, happening so as to reduce the supply of oil, so as to increase prices, so as to preserve the purchasing power of the United States dollar. Then we got to throw into the mix the whole cost of the war. If you ever want to boost an economy, you start a war. And that keeps factories going and people employed. And people like Dick Cheney make billions of dollars because his company that he was CEO of, m meaning Halliburton, is responsible for the lion's share of all the oil drilling work and reconstruction work in Iraq and Afghanistan. So <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this, but your vice president is still making billions. That's Hundreds a scary thought. I mean, that, that just yeah. that comment you made is very scary. In order for us to uh, succeed, it's, it's by war. That's very scary as far as just to get anywhere. Right. So I went off onto a 70-year uh, quick summary of history to prove a single point. And that is the United States, since World War II, has been on a transition from making things, uh, hundreds of things, to making only two things really well. And those two things are war and debt. I can see that. <laughs> I can. Yeah. And you're about to start another war in Syria, which will lead to another war on Iran. And I'm quite concerned that by the time Iran is uh, backed into a corner, that uh, the United States dollar will be dead as far as a world's reserve currency is concerned. And that uh, you'll get into a real terrorist attack, unlike a staged attack on 9-11. Oh, you know what? Okay, let's get into 9-11. Let, let's jump to 2001, September 11th. There's a lot. I, I read a lot of stuff, and there's a lot of people out there who's trying to subside this and say, you know, but I see, like I was talking with Patrick, there's a lot of conspiratorial facts here that I read, I'm not going off eyewitness accounts. I mean, it's what I see is what I go off of. And there's a lot of inconsistencies, even in the 9-11 reports itself. Oh, absolutely. I, I own a copy of the 9-11 commission report and there's holes in it that you can drive a truck through. Like, I don't understand how Hani Hanur, the alleged pilot of Flight 77 that hit the, uh, the Pentagon, uh, had trouble flying a single-engine Cessna three weeks before 9-11, but on the morning of 9-11, managed to take a full-size jet airliner down 17,000 feet in about seven minutes, yeah, doing a 320-degree loop-de-loop in the most secure airspace on, on planet Earth with surface-to-air uh, missiles all over the Washington area and managed to clip five light poles and hit the Pentagon at over 500 miles per hour, one foot above the ground. Yeah, he, he should should have uh, went out for a job with the Thunderbirds. <laughs> yeah. And, let, I, let, I just, and it completely incinerated the plane to, to leave no, no evidence of a, of a plane. <laughs> exactly. I mean, so, uh, Leonard, so this also has to do with money. I mean... Like, like seeing what's going on when you summed up the 70 years pretty much very clearly is that this was um, basically what I'm trying to get at is who's really responsible for 9-11. I know I, I could see the motive clearly, and I bet the listeners can as well. But um, what I'm trying to get at is who's really responsible because a lot of people, uh, let me just throw up one, one, like two words, red flag. Basically, is that what happened? Was this a red flag event? Absolutely. In order to under, understand or answer your question, uh, as in, you know, who would do this? Ask yourself a related question. 
who would benefit from this? And the answer is almost always the three-headed snake, uh, which is joined at the hip between Israel and Great Britain and America and the security and economic apparatus thereof. For example, um, the United States dollar is allowed to be the world's reserve currency still, although that's going to change very soon, uh, by the powers that be, which are in London. You see, the world really has three city states. And for thousands of years, the world has been ruled by city states, the, the city state of Babylon, the city state of of Rome, etc. And in the 21st century, that's still operating today. You have the religious city states of um, the Vatican and Israel, and you have the financial city state of London, which is a one square mile city, which is legally separate from the rest of London proper. Yes, there are two cities, one city inside a city. And then you have the military arm of the New World Order, which is Washington, D.C., within the city of Washington. Wow. That's uh, <laughs> speechless. It's, it, no, it's, it's just mind-blowing because, <laughs> you know, I've done a show be, before with you in New World Order, and I suggest everybody go to the website and, and, and see. We did a two-part show. So I'm pretty caught up with this, and it, it makes a lot of sense to me. And But going back to 9-11, I understand just by what I've done in research that America needed an excuse to go after Saddam Hussein, you know, and because you were talking about him shelling out oil so cheap, it, to me, it, it's supply and demand, and he's devaluing the price, and the, especially the dollar itself. So, you know, what better excuse than to start a, a war within and, you know, have everybody back it up and go for an attack, you know? Oh, absolutely. For example, Israel was involved in 9-11, which is a subject that most people don't want to touch because as soon as you say that, somehow you're labeled anti-Semitic. Well, I can say that the powers that be behind America are also behind uh, 9-11, but that doesn't make me anti-American. Okay, so why was Israel involved? Well, if the United States is busy fighting Israel's enemies, then <laughs> why not? Why wouldn't you actively engage in the staged wounding of your best friend? That makes a lot of sense. Exactly. And uh, London... The financial center of London, controlled by the Rothschilds, is actively involved because they still want the United States dollar to be in power. But like, like I keep saying, not for much longer. Only a few more years left. Of course. So what, what are they wanting to switch it to? Will it be the euro? And why are they wanting the United States dollar out so bad? Okay, I have been considering that question for a number of years because it's it's going to be the most important question of this decade. And the answer to your question is based, again, on money. I am seeing uh, a very slow chess match between Eastern powers, as in Russia and China and India, and uh, Western powers, as in Europe and the United States, and there's going to be a war sometime this decade. I, I would be shocked if there isn't. And the war is going to be over what the definition of money will be. Will it be, uh, according to the Rothschilds and the United States designs, which is a purely synthetic, entirely electronic credit system based out of nothing, like you won't even get paper. You'll just get electronic credits. And that's very or, scary because, uh, I mean, we're talking about electronic, which can be easily be lost and controlled. Is, is that the uh, RFID chip that, that they're wanting to implant into people? That is a, a forerunner technology. Yes. Yes, it is. Or, All right, Will, Leonard, or, hold it right yes. there. We're about to go to the bottom of the hour. 
When we come back, okay. more with Leonard Ulrich about 9-11, and we'll take our caller when we return straight ahead. All right, Leonard, we have a caller for you. Mark is on the line. Hey, hey, Michael, Leonard, how's it going? Very good. Yeah. Well, anyways, Leonard, uh, as you were talking about earlier, you know, concerning the Rothschilds, don't forget M.A. Rothschild's famous statement, give me control of the nation's money, and I care not who makes its rules. And when you say war, I mean, take a good look. World War I, we got the League of Nations. World War II, the United Nations. And also concerning 9-11, Leonard, I'm not so sure, but have you heard of or, or seen any of these film documentaries, 9-11 in plain sight, 9-11 ripple effect? Loose change and 9-11 missing links, by any chance? I have seen them all. Yeah. Well, uh, also, and also, Leonard, as I mentioned to the screener, don't forget uh, false flag operations. I mean, before the 9-11 attacks, sir, let us not forget the Lusitania, Pearl Harbor, the Levant Affair, and more recently, what I wish most Americans would know about it, the USS Liberty. <laughs> sir, you really need to watch my movie because everything that you just said is in there. Oh, uh, uh, trust me, Leonard. Uh, trust me. Ever since I uh, woke up back in 1999, and and, I, and I'm sure, Leonard, uh, this is the same Marcus sent you that information on the traditional Catholic movement, Brother Michael Diamond, and such. Oh, trust. Me. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, trust me, Leonard. Uh, you know, as, as I said in that one statement, uh, when you follow the money, uh, go down the rabbit hole. Depending on your conscience, intellect, and goodwill, prepare to uh, ha have prepare to have your your world rocked and everything, and uh, but, but but Leonard, when you look at it, it's this, it's the age-old battle. Despite you know how much I may I cannot stand you know liberal thinking, war, abortion. It's the age-old battle: Jesus Christ versus Lucifer. You're either in the camp of light or the camp of darkness. I couldn't agree more, brother. Yeah. Well, anyways, um, uh, Michael Leonard, uh, you know it, it's good it's good to hear from you guys, uh, Michael. Michael, Patrick, Clinton, take care. Give my best to Lindsay. And, uh, you know, it, it's great to hear from you guys. And uh, the best thing I could say is, you know, it's programs such as yourself, news out outlets such as Press TV, Russia Today, and, and I will say the shortwave like GCN, uh, the American Freedom Radio, Liberty New News Radio, Republic Broadcasting. You know, it's, uh, you know, it, it's time to wake up and, and, as they say, think outside the box. And basically tell the mainstream, be it the BBC, CNN, Fox, and Sky News, sorry, uh, Rockefellers, Rothschilds, we're not going to be your NWO puppets or, or, or uh, zombies. Take care. Thanks for calling, Mark. I'm cutting the strings to this. I'm not a puppet. But what do you think about that, Leonard? That's a very intriguing stuff. Yeah, I, I love that uh, the caller's points there because uh, basically everything he said uh, is in my movie. Uh, I didn't cover the USS Liberty because that's a whole separate issue, uh, but it's definitely there. Uh, for those uh, listeners who aren't aware, uh, the USS Liberty incident occurred in 1967 when uh, the United States ship the Liberty was fired on by Israel. And the United States Liberty uh, ship was flying an oversized U.S. flag, clearly identifying it as a United States military ship. And the ship was in international waters. And for hours, the United States Liberty uh, took torpedoes and uh, uh, machine gun strafing and napalm bombs on its deck. And it would not return fire on Israeli jets because they were an ally. And the whole point behind the uh, USS Liberty incident was to uh, sink that ship. Um, Lyndon Johnson wanted that ship to be sunk and then blame that sinking on Egypt. And thank God, literally, thank God that that ship limped to harbor. And uh, the rest is history. So, Leonard, we have a history of, I mean, truth is not told here when it comes to everything that, because you were also talking about how media outlets are so corrupt now. Oh, it's it's amazing. You know, I've got a $5,000 video editing computer and several monitors, but I don't have a television. I haven't had a television for seven years. It, I, I can't watch it. I get physically upset when I watch it. I mean, Fox News is the worst. 
I, I, I can't even take five minutes of Fox News when, when I see that shill uh, O'Reilly and her and his sidekick talking about Fukushima. And then they're explaining to us how the radiation coming from Fukushima is actually good for you because it's just like, a, you know, getting a, a chest X-ray. <laughs> I mean, they're literally saying this. And then they're saying how the mercury in the vaccines, they're saying that, I'm not, is actually good for you because it actually enhances brain function. That, that, that's pretty outlandish. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you know, I mean, you, if I was a conspiracy theorist, which I'm not, I'm a conspiracy researcher, all I do is show you what I can prove, uh, I couldn't make this up. I really couldn't. Well, it's out there so, for the open mind to see this. I mean, it's just how willing are you, like Mark said, to go down the rabbit hole. I mean, it's out there. I, I watch your, your, your movie on YouTube, which is fascinating, and I applaud you on that. I mean, there's a lot of information. I know you took a lot of time putting it together, but once you watch this, it, it's like you just wake up from a deep coma, and, you, and everything comes together, you know? Well, it's funny you should say that because uh, as the caller suggested, you know, it is about uh, good versus evil, light versus dark, uh, uh, Jesus versus Lucifer. And as soon as I say that, some portion of your audience will roll their eyes and go, oh, there he goes, that Christian again. And uh, all I would simply say is, look, it's not me who's saying that. You should You should watch my movie and see... Uh, Mason after military general after this and that person to all talking about Lucifer and why they're doing what they're doing. So I'm not saying that they are. So don't believe me. Just listen to them. But uh, going back to the media, you know, the propaganda, it actually fuels the war. You know, it shows pictures of the children, uh, in bad shape, you know, claiming that we bombed them, but it doesn't show that the terrorists were there hiding and they're actually using the kids to plant IEDs and, and suicide bomb. Well, that is correct. But then again, why are they doing that? Is it because they uh, just hate America or is it because we're over there and we won't allow these countries to, uh, have an independent economy. And the moment when the, the nation does elect a, a moderate, such as Mohammed Mossadegh back 60 years ago, who was the leader of Iraq, um, was deposed by the United States, um, and it, sorry, leader of Iran, and was deposed by the United States, and uh, in went the uh, Ayatollah Khomeini. I mean, he, Mohammed Mossadegh wanted to nationalize the oil fields of his country and use the profits to create infrastructure. I mean, think about that. And that is not allowed under the petrodollar standard for over 40 years, which I explained at the top of the show. So to wind back to what we were talking about earlier, uh, again, uh, the th one sentence I want people to take away with is uh, from top to bottom, 9-11 is about money control and the occult. And uh, just before the bottom of the hour break, we were talking about how I foresee a war between a, an East versus West war in the Middle East over the definition of money. And I was saying the Western definition of money will be something purely electronic based on nothing, based on chips or credit cards, and the Eastern definition of money will be on gold and silver and oil and any things of tangible value. The Chinese are buying gold and silver and copper and anything they can get their hands on. Five years ago, China exported silver and gold. Now, China is importing silver and gold, and their gold imports are up over 700% over all of last year at this time already. I mean, what does China know that we don't? You know what it looks like? It looks like the United States doesn't have anything tangible. No. We're, li we're, no, like, exactly. we're like bullies. That's what I see it as. 
You know, we the only tangible thing is, like you said, is war, you know, and we're pretty much in the face of everybody. We're invading other countries. We're there when we shouldn't be there. And it's like we're holding everybody's hand. That's right. Um, if after the show, people have access to the Internet, I would highly encourage them to go to a website called Debt Kleptocracy. Debt Kleptocracy. And all it is is a series of uh, computer drawings of the debts of the big U.S. banks. And you literally see hundreds of trillions of dollars stacked up against the computerized rendering of the head offices of these big banks in the United States. And I'm talking in $100 bills, not $1 bills, not $10 bills, but in $100 bills, dozens of twin towers of stacks of debt that all the banks have created. And they consider, the big banks consider their uh, your debt to the banks to be their asset. It's, it's insanity. And the only way this game can keep going is if the United States continues to engage other nations in war as the United States shifts from capitalism to extractionism. So uh, China is becoming the, the world power with money because where the money is is where the power is. They already said that uh, they will not support us in a war with Iran and Syria, and they said that they would fight against us. So whenever the the well runs dry or the credit runs out for the United States, where is that going to leave us? Are we going to become property of another country, or are we just going to become a third world country? How about both? <laughs> I hate to say it that way, but it's it's literally both because— uh, there's no way the big American banks with their uh, hundreds of trillions of dollars of derivatives, which is just leveraged debt, as in this group of a million mortgages gets sold from bank A to bank B to bank C, which gets cut up in 50 different ways and gets dumped on to, uh, let's say, oh, the nation of Greeks banks. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's why Greece is hurting now. It has nothing to do with the Greece economy got everything to do with the American banks parking their debt, their bad apples on the de- uh, doorstep of Greece. And you know what? I don't think people are going to take this for much longer. No, but you know what, uh, Leonard, what we were talking about, I don't think it even come to that point because I think we're going to kickstart another war so we could save our butts. You know, and then you well, have World War III. I'm, I'm, I'm expecting some kind of false flag event in the Olympics. Now, I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm saying there's a higher probability of it occurring because what would distract people's attention from the absolutely growing tension in Europe from bank runs in, let's see, Greece and Spain, in Italy. Uh, They've got bank holidays already in in those nations. I mean, what would be the great distraction another false flag event. Now, again, I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm saying there's an increased probability of it happening. Yes. Uh, Let me ask you this. Talking about false flags, what would you say about the Osama bin Laden assassination? Is that another false flag? 100%. Um, It is amazing to have SEAL Team 6 allegedly get the body of Osama bin Laden and then dump it in the ocean and then and then claim that this is Muslim tradition. I mean, excuse me, are, are you expecting me to believe that for centuries, uh, Islam, a desert religion, would transport its dead b- behind a camel and drag it hundreds of miles across the desert and dump it in, in the ocean? Like, come on. You know, and... Uh, hitting on on another aspect of Bin Laden, how did 9-11 get linked to him initially whenever his brother, I believe it was his brother, it was a, a close family member, what, was meeting with higher powers in America in D.C. the morning of September 11th? 
Bin Laden was the uh, person in the Bin La- Osama Bin Laden was a person within the Bin Laden family who agreed to take the blame for 9-11. And that was easily done because Osama was dying of Marfan's disease, which is related to kidney failure. I have four or five reports of Bin Laden dying in early 2002. And the United States carried those reports. And this is incredible. It's like Bin Laden, you know, died several times. But, you know, a decade later, we finally killed Bin Laden. And then what was it? Was his uh, death this last time? Was it conveniently because it was coming up on an election year? Absolutely. 100 percent. Bin Laden, the the. SEAL team that was uh, allegedly responsible for uh, getting bin Laden was mysteriously killed on a routine m- mission after after the... Yeah, yeah, exactly. The whole team. And you never, ever, ever have an entire SEAL team on a single helicopter. That breaks every protocol because you got to keep that unit, unit functional. I mean, it just it just reeks to high heaven. So the whole thing was staged and uh, Bin Laden's been dead since at least early 2002. And then um, Barry Satoro, excuse me, um, Barack Obama uh, was conveniently, you know, using that card at that particular time to uh, give him points. Yeah, he used it to his advantage when, you know, when it's time to strike. Yeah. And uh, also the um, going back to them saying that it's the culture to throw them into the ocean or whatever. Uh, the, in that, that culture, they have to be buried by sunset and that that's the only law that they have. Yes. And they are buried towards Mecca. Yeah. So there's a lot of holes, like I said, and I mean the whole nine 11 thing, this is what gets me because uh, on the NWO show you talked about, if you want to hear the truth within anything in the news media, the only time they slip up is within the first 24 hours of an actual event happening. I mean, transpiring, and then that's when stuff slips up. But, I mean, there were reports of demolition, explosions going off, and all this. When 9-11 was going off, and the whole thing was just fishy. But you seen what happened. Everybody was united. Everybody was Americans. Nobody was racist no more. And and everybody was for for taking out Saddam Hussein. And I mean, if you watch the media when they first went into Baghdad and took over the circle, they took the American flag and wrapped it around the statue of uh, Saddam Hussein. And then they told him to take that down because it looks like you are taken over. You know? Disrespectful. Yeah. there. Well, that's extremely disrespectful. Exactly. Yes. So in the whole. As far as when we talk about the whole 9-11, and you've already previously said that, you know, you believe it was a red flag uh, to give us an excuse to start to kickstart the war on terror and go after to save the almighty dollar. I mean, as far as the planes go, I know there were casualties of war within our own war. Um did Al Qaeda actually play a part in this? Al Qaeda really is El Cia. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's as simple as that. It it really is. Um, for, you have to go back to 1979. Zbigniew Brzezinski, uh, Jimmy Carter's uh, foreign affairs secretary, created Al Qaeda from the Mujahideen to use against the Soviets in Afghanistan in 1979 and 1980. The word Al-Qaeda literally means the base, as in the database, as in the database of the Mujahideen who are willing to act as mercenaries against the Soviets. And the Bin Laden family uh, is the second wealthiest family in many parts of the Arab world because They get their money from the um, uh, head oil shakes uh, all over the Middle East, and they are the world's or the Middle East's number one construction family. So why would Bin Laden uh, 
agree to act as some kind of terrorist when he's got a family that's worth mega billions. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, this also goes back all the way to George Bush Sr. when he was director of the CIA. And he was very highly involved with the bin Laden family, wasn't he? Oh, totally. I mean, in my film, uh, New World Order, Secret Societies and Biblical Prophecy on YouTube, you can uh, see the actual contract from, I believe, 1976, where uh, bin Laden's father, Salim bin Laden, makes a, a oil deal with Arbusto 76 Limited, which was headed up at the time by George W. Bush himself. That was George W. Bush's first oil company, and he gets uh, the drilling money from bin Laden's father. If, I mean, if you see, there's a paper trail there. You know, okay, we're coming up to the end, and I I want basically... Um, God, I just lost my train. You always get me thinking. <laughs> I can't remember what I'm going to say because I'm trying to I know, I have a question. Remember, we've only covered we've only covered one third of my statement. I just know. Barely that's why the surface. every time I do a show with this guy, I have to do a two parter because it's just this guy is just too much information. But okay, this is where I want to say: it. What's in store in the future for the United States? Because I know we're not going to bag down. I know that. I know we're you know we bully people. And we're not going to let the dollar fall. And if it does, there's going to be some big event for a reason for it to fall. But where are we heading as a country? You are headed into the abyss of more war and more debt. And you're going to get poorer. And the only way to preserve your wealth is by doing what millions of people are doing in Greece and in Spain and uh, other nations like Italy. Right now, as we speak, 1 billion euros per day are being withdrawn from Greek bank accounts because uh, the vote on the Greek drac drachma is occurring this Sunday. And a lot of Greek people are saying, hey, uh, if we go from the euro to the drachma, man, our, what we can buy with our credits in our bank account is just going to be cut in half. And I'm saying, yeah, you're right. And guess what? That's going to happen to America. So if I were you and I'm practicing when I'm preaching and I'm only telling you what I'm doing, I'm not giving financial advice. I would put as much as I can into gold and silver because they preserve their purchasing power. This whole thing is about gold and silver. Uh, that's why Germany is now accepting gold as payment for the debt of Euro countries. All right, Leonard, we are out of time. Real quick, your website or YouTube channel? My, my YouTube channel is called Leonard Ulrich. It's just my name. It's very plain Jane. Uh, the movie, my first volume is New World Order, Secret Societies, and Biblical Prophecy. Volume one is done. I am working on volume two as we speak, and it is entirely on money or the illusion of money. All right, Leonard, it's always a pleasure to have you on a show. We would love to have you back again. Thank you all for listening to Paranormal Beyond. Until next time, take care.